Hi guys, it's Maivu. Welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a while since my last video, but I was missing you. I was missing coming on here and connecting with other humans. <laughs> so I thought of coming back and doing a video that I know it's simple, but I wanted to make it for a while and it just fell out of my head, to be honest. And so I thought, okay, let's do it now. Um, and as I said, I know it's simple, but um, I hope that you'll find it useful. And if you have any questions, just let me know. I hope you're doing great and let's jump into the video. Okay, so let's start from the shape that all the other shapes come from, the ball or the sphere. This is probably the one that comes most natural to everyone. At some point or another, we all made a ball of clay in our lives, even just out of dough. So after conditioning or kneading the clay, you want to start rolling it between your hands without applying a lot of pressure that could start distorting the shape. You may find it easier to roll the clay in a certain area of your hand. It could be the hollow or the more fleshy part. You might use the ball shape as just that, so just a ball, or to make a face, to make an eye, or as a starting point for other shapes. The teardrop. To make the teardrop, you start from a ball of clay, but you want to roll only one side of the ball, elongating it into a tip. You can do this on your hand or on your worktop if you find it more comfortable. You might use a teardrop to make leaves, petals or similar triangular shaped things like a nose. You can turn a teardrop into a petal or leaf shape by flattening it and rounding the edges. I like to start by tracing a line down the centre and then tracing the lines on the side, pointing the needle tool outwards. Making a smaller leaf is not different than making a big one. The only thing you'll need to change is the tool you make the lines with. As the leaf gets smaller, so do the lines, so you'll have to work with a finer needle. This one I'm using is a safety pin with a polymer clay handle. You can find the video on how I made it on the top right corner of this video. Another shape you can obtain from a teardrop is the cone. You shape a ball of clay into a teardrop and then press the wider end down onto your worktop as you spin it to flatten the bottom. I'm using a small towel here so you can see, but you can use your worktop as well. You might find this shape useful for making trees, meringues, even legs like elephant legs for example. If you stretch the other side of the teardrop as well, you'll see it turn into the crescent shape, which of course can be used to make crescents and other similar shapes which may not be as obvious like an eyebrow bone or a cheekbone for example, so when you're sculpting faces this is a good shape to have. Next we have the truckle of cheese or layer of cake which you can make by pinching the top and bottom of the bowl with your thumb and index fingers and the sides of the clay with your other hand. You want to pinch the sides in turns as you spin the clay in your hand. I'm, I'm not sure if this is clear. I think it's better if you watch the video rather than have me explain what I'm doing. You can also roll the truckle of cheese on its side to get a neater finish. 
This shape might be particularly useful to make cakes if you don't have a pasta machine or cutter but you still want to get even sized layers with defined sides. And if you flatten the sides you'll get a sort of um, pancake shape that's very useful when sculpting things like petals, adding cheeks or a chin to a sculpture for example. And last but not least is the strand. You'll find yourself using this shape a lot as this is the starting point for so many others where you want evenly sized pieces like petals, leaves, even miniature biscuits or donuts. I think the most important thing to remember when making strands is not to apply any extra pressure with your fingers as this will deform the clay and you'll end up with an uneven strand. Gently roll the clay back and forth, stretching the clay from the center outwards. If the strand gets too long and tricky to roll, just trim it and roll one piece at a time. Strands can be used for so many things. Vines, branches, arms, legs, fingers, eyebrows, muscles, sprinkles, you name it. And it's a starting point for other less obvious shapes like the petal, which I'll be showing you in a second. After making the strand and cutting some even pieces, you want to take one piece, roll it into a ball and flatten it, particularly the edges so that in the case of a petal it appears a bit more delicate. And of course you want to use a blade to pick it up, you don't want to deform the shape. So those are the shapes that I find myself making the most and that I think would be beneficial for all beginners to know and practice. And the more you work you'll see how shapes are so much more interconnected than you might think and how thinking in shapes might actually ease your sculpting skills. I really hope you found this video helpful and if you have any questions, just let me know. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday and your Valentine's Day. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time. Bye, ciao, ciao.